what are three key factors for transforming the U.S. health system. I'm Dr. Chad Swanson, and I'm on a journey to understand and transform our health system. Yesterday, I shared a video. I shared 10 key considerations for creating the best health system in the world, for the United States becoming the best health system in the world in the next 30 years. As I thought about it, though, really those 10 considerations can be summarized in three key factors. Uh, the first is the importance of a shared vision. So I would contend that the shared vision should be that there is optimal health and well-being for all at the lowest possible cost. As we consider that vision, health is determined by a lot of factors, our social relationships, our health care system, economic factors, political factors, social factors, etc. Um, and so there is a very important need for there to be a shared vision. So a vision that's owned by every individual that impacts health. Historically, as we've thought about the history of slavery, for example, or the history of democracy, or the rise in women's suffrage, or the recent change in the way that we as a society view LGBTQ people, um, those historical examples demonstrate the importance, the need, and the power of a large group of people reaching a critical mass to change society. And it's happened before and it can happen again. But we have to rally around a vision of optimal health and not be distracted by other factors, which I'll discuss in a little bit. This matters. It matters because this has to do with the health and well-being of ourselves and our neighbors and people in our communities and in our nations. Um, how to create a shared vision? We need to consider health and optimal health and well-being for all at the lowest possible cost at every interaction, every level, every hiring decision, every funding decision, every clinical decision, research decision, every educational decision within the health system. So optimal health and well-being for all at the lowest possible cost needs to be the primary consideration. In order to get us to that point, I believe that we need to tell stories. We need to share experiences. And that's how, how we as human beings uh, function. We are motivated by stories. We're inspired by stories. And other social change in the past has uh, been driven by stories. So that's the first key factor is the importance of a shared vision. Once we consider the importance of a shared vision across this diverse, large number of people that influence our health, then uh, I began to realize that health isn't a group of disjointed organizations and people each working in their own sphere. It's really a dynamic ecosystem of people and organizations that adapt and change over time based on assumptions and incentives. And so there's, there's a, a way of viewing the world, a theory, a group of principles and tools called complex adaptive systems. Systems thinking is another um, a vein of, of this discipline. Um, but really, as we think about health more as a complex adaptive system, as opposed to a machine that, need, that we need to fix each individual part, then it really changes everything. So it changes the way that leadership is approached. So instead of command and control leadership from the top, leadership is emergent and distributed and adaptive. Our education, instead of being um, ossified uh, regulations and requirements over time, it's adaptive and personalized um, based on the needs of the individual. Research, instead of being a, a, a performed in elite, uh, exclusively in elite institutions by experts. It's performed and involved with the community and, and people. Uh, our institutions change when we consider health as a complex adaptive systems, as well as the patient and doctor relationships. Here are two cartoons that help, or two figures that help me to understand the importance of this 
viewpoint. So in the current system, which I would argue is based on a biomedical reductionist model, that is biology and medicine is the uh, focus and driving factors. And um, reductionism means that we consider each individual part separately. We have a number of subsystems within our health system, clinical medicine, and I'm in a subsystem within that subsystem, emergency medicine. And we are generally focused on rescue treatment with profits and prestige driving us as well. Another subsystem might be health education, where we're focused on degrees. Uh, another might be re research, where we're focused on grants and publications. Another might be politics, where we're most interested in getting reelected, et cetera, et cetera. So each subsystem is interested in their own uh, different goals without adequate consideration of the interaction between these subsystems to reach what we as a society really want, the shared vision of optimal health and well-being for all at the lowest possible cost. Here's a different figure that might represent a more uh, ideal system that is considering health as a complex adaptive system. So you have all of the subsystems here, but some have merged with others. There are feedback loops within these subsystems that are, so there's learning that's going on between these. And then over time, these subsystems are adapting. All the time, this ribbon here represents a shared vision and aligned incentives, which I'm gonna to get to in a second. So a shared vision and aligned incentives keep all these subsystems, which are dynamic and adaptive and changing all the time, depending on a pandemic that comes up or a change in politics or a change in, in a, a societal um, development or an environmental catastrophe. So all of these subsystems are continuously adapting, but we're held together by this shared vision of optimal health and well-being for all at the lowest possible cost and aligned incentives to reach what we as a society really want. So the three key factors are shared vision, understanding health as a complex adaptive system, and then finally that all of our incentives are aligned with that shared vision. So currently in our health systems, there are, are a number of other incentives, and I just listed a few that I came up with. I'm sure you can think of many yourselves as well, but these are all drivers of our health system that outshine health and well-being for all at the lowest possible cost. So obviously profits and financial um, incentives, licensing requirements. So instead of adapting over time, we're, uh, we, we have uh, been set in requirements that are over 100 years old. Public health projects, grants, uh, isolated, episodic treatment clinical visits, prestige and power, uh, pursuit of prestige and power, fear of rejection often keeps us from pursuing health and well-being for all, comfort with the status quo, job security, scientific illiteracy, political allegiance, fee-for-service reimbursement, a convoluted and difficult to understand financial and organizational systems, short-term clinical metrics, and uh, degrees, positions, ranks within universities, hospitals, etc. So these are all factors and incentives that we have considered that, that motivate us and drive us more than health and well-being for all at the lowest possible cost. I'd like your thoughts about the three key factors for transforming our health system. I'd like your thoughts about drivers and influences that distract us from what we really want. Thank you. Oh, before I stop this video, let me just say that um, my goal here is to create a video every day. So I'd like to be on a learning journey with you. So I'd, I'm, I'm hoping to contribute to or catalyze or create a community that uh, explores these ideas, that's motivated around these ideas, that uh, we can uh, engage in shared learning around these ideas. So if you have questions about transformational health change, um, I'd love to answer them and research them and uh, look forward to your comments and criticism. Thank you.